I just lost 30 pounds. In this video, I'm gonna share how I did it. So don't turn away because that starts right now. and thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. This video will be a little bit different from my traditional weekly videos. So if you're not inclined to hear about my weight loss journey and how it may help you, tune in next week when I go back to my standard MS content. My name's Aaron Boster, and two years ago, I opened the Boster Center for Multiple Sclerosis right as the global viral pandemic hit. I started doing telemedicine and we haven't looked back. Today, as I make this video in December 2021, I'm still doing 50 to 75% of my visits on telemedicine. I went from up, moving around, running from clinic room to clinic room to clinic room, to sitting stationary, looking at an iPad and talking to patients on Zoom during telemedicine visits. Also, let's be honest, opening up a MS center during a global viral pandemic is a little bit stressful. And in the setting of working many, many hours, sitting and staring and not moving, and the stress of a new business, I'll be very honest, I gained a lot of weight. Many of the tools that I used to stay in shape, like going to the gym, were taken away from me with the global viral pandemic. And I found myself working, eating, and sitting, and then doing a little sleeping and I gained 30 some pounds. Now I'm gonna share with you a program that worked really well for me. And the best part is it's completely free. And at the end of this video, I'll explain to you how I think it's actually very safe and not a bad idea for people impacted by MS. I'm talking about using intermittent fasting. Now, when I started to learn about intermittent fasting, my eyes were kind of opened up and I wanna give a call out to a really cool nephrologist, a guy named Jason Fung, MD. I've never met him, but if I do, I'm gonna shake his hand. He wrote a really, really cool book that I read called The Obesity Code. And he has a YouTube channel. And I read his book and I looked at his YouTube videos and I learned a tremendous amount. I find him to be an amazing educator, really easy to understand. And he taught me essentially most of what I'm sharing with you right now. One of the things he taught me, which I had failed to fully appreciate even going through medical school was the role of insulin in controlling weight loss and the fact that the calories in calories out model that I have preached previously is faulty. It's flawed and it doesn't really work. Here's the deal. When you eat something and it raises your blood sugar level in response, your insulin rises. Now insulin is a storage hormone. When insulin levels are high and you eat something, there's two options of what can happen to it. You can use it as fuel, or you can store it as fat. Also, when insulin is high, you can't burn fat. So lipolysis, which is burning your own fat, is impossible when insulin is elevated. When insulin levels fall, so the storage hormone goes down, it tells your body that there's a paucity of calories available, and so your body changes its program and starts to use your own fat stores as fuel. If you think about the idea of eating during the day and sleeping during the night, you're eating calories during the day, some of it you're using for energy, some of it you're storing for fuel. When you go to bed, you're not eating obviously, and for the first six hours you're asleep, you're gonna be feeding your body using sugar, using glycogen, which is stored in your liver. But after about six hours, you deplete all the glycogen. And if you didn't have another energy store, you would die in your sleep. And that doesn't happen because when your glycogen stores run down, your insulin levels are low, your body starts to use its own fat. So that was a really key piece to this whole experience that I was personally missing. I would wake up in the morning between five and 6 a.m., pour a big cup of coffee with a lot of milk or cream in it, and that milk or cream would spike my insulin. And then I would go about my day drinking coffee with cream. I would go to the office and I may grab a Danish. I may grab a bagel. I wasn't really eating, I told myself. I may even skip lunch. And then I would work and I'd be busy and oftentimes I might even skip dinner. Here's the problem. I would get home at night, say eight o'clock at night, and I was massively hungry. And at that point I had no inhibition. I was a monster and I would go in the kitchen and I would eat crap until sometimes midnight. And I was doing this in the setting of working 80 to 100 hours and under significant stress, and boy, the calories packed on. Now, if you think about that story about insulin, I was spiking my insulin, keeping my storage hormone elevated from about six in the morning until about 12 at night. I never ever gave my body time to rest, if you will. And 
it doesn't surprise me that I was gaining a lot of weight. So here's what I did, super simple, two things. Thing number one, I started 16-8 intermittent fasting. What does that mean in English? It means that for 16 hours of the day, I don't eat any calories, and for eight hours of the day, I eat. So I start eating at noon, and I eat until 8 p.m., so that's eight hours. And then from 8 p.m. until the next day at noon, I don't eat. During my fasting period, I drink lots of water and I like carbonated water because it fills up my stomach and makes me feel full. I can drink black coffee, a favorite of mine. For all of you who follow the channel, you know that I'm a big coffee lover. And green tea. Now, nothing in the tea, nothing in the coffee, and no uh, diet sodas or anything like that. Nothing with calories. Now, the second piece to this is during the feeding window, so during noon to eight, it's important that I don't eat just anything. I try to stay away from unhealthy foods. The same things that I preach to you. I'm avoiding heavily processed foods, fried foods, sugar-laden foods, and I'm also trying to avoid excessive carbohydrates. So I'm staying away from breads and bagels and danishes and stuff like that. I'm not being super strict about it, but I am making sure that I get plenty of protein and that I'm eating some healthy fats like avocados and stuff like that. At noon, I eat a lunch. I try really hard not to snack or eat anything between lunch and dinner. Dinner, I eat a full dinner with my family. And as a pro tip, I eat until satiety, which means I eat so that I'm full. And then after 8 p.m., I don't eat. And I go all the way until the next day at noon. Now, this has turned out to be really easy for my lifestyle. I mean, in essence, I'm cutting out snacking and I'm cutting out breakfast. I wake up in the morning, I'm really not hungry. I enjoy drinking my coffee, I go to work, I'm really enjoying taking care of patients, and the day goes really quickly. So my first meal when I break my fast is at noon. I used a free app called Fastic. Uh, I don't have an association or relationship with that company, I just really like the app. And the reason I liked it is it graphically showed me when I could eat and when I couldn't eat and it tracked my weight loss. And over a period of about two months, I lost 30 pounds and I've kept all the weight off and I'm super proud about that. I'm excited that I'm not snoring when I sleep. I'm having more energy. I feel better and I fit good in my clothes. So let's turn our attention to the topic of intermittent fasting in the setting of multiple sclerosis. So the question would be, is it safe or is there any risk to someone with MS considering intermittent fasting? Now, interestingly, there's a literature on this and I've read several papers looking at it. The punchline is I think it is probably safe. Now listen, I'm not giving you medical advice, you know that. You need to talk to your doctor about what's right and safe for you. I'm simply excited to share with you my journey and what I've started to learn and what I've started to share with my own patients. So with that disclaimer, there are some really cool papers that suggest that it is safe for people with impacted by MS to do intermittent fasting. The coolest papers I saw were actually written about patients with MS who are Muslim and who practice the holiday of Ramadan. So once a year for an entire month, devout Muslims do not eat or drink when it's light outside. I think the idea is if you can tell the difference between a black thread and a white thread, so it's light enough that you can tell the difference, you can't eat or drink. And so they'll only consume water and food when it's dark outside, and they do that for an entire month. So for a month, all these people impacted by MS were not eating for 12 or 14 hours during the day, and then they were eating only at night. And what they found was it did not increase the risk of an MS attack, and people were able to tolerate it. And so I like knowing that. Now, there's been some other scientific studies that have demonstrated the same results, but that one really struck me as being a kind of a cool investigation and a very real world application. So. I have become very excited about intermittent fasting. It's great for my lifestyle, which doesn't mean it's gonna be great for yours. In a nutshell, I eat from noon until 8 p.m. And then from 8 p.m. until noon, I don't eat. I just drink water, have coffee or tea during the day. I eat a big lunch and I eat a big dinner and I try not to snack in between. I try to stay away from processed foods and fatty foods and I try to stay away from sugars and carbohydrates. And of course, I don't drink soda pop and stuff like that. It's been great for me. I feel better and I'm excited to share with you guys my experience. Now, if you have experience with intermittent fasting, I would love to hear about it. And please leave a comment down in the section below and I'll look forward to reading about it. And I think the folks on this channel will really like to hear from you as well.
If you have questions, please leave them down there and I look forward to answering them. If you'd like to hear more about diet and MS, click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next video or my next live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.